Welcome to Bring the World Home, a production of the Return Peace Corps Volunteers of Hawaii. My name is Linda Chalk, and I served as a Peace Corps volunteer in the Northern Mariana Islands of Micronesia from 1966 to 1968. In each of our shows, we share with you the culture and experiences of a returned Peace Corps volunteer from one of the many countries that Peace Corps serves around the world. With us today is Michelle Andrews, who served in Poland from 1995 to 1997. Welcome, Michelle. Thank you. Thanks for having me. Uh, here's our globe of the world, and here we are in Hawaii. Can you show us where Poland is from here? Surely. It's all the way around here, right there, Okay, Central Europe. Can you tell us a little bit about Poland? Just give us an idea mm -hmm. of what the country was like. It's a very beautiful country. Um, I was expecting a very industrial country, so I was misinformed. Uh, there are pockets of industrial areas, but for the most part it's very agricultural. Um, mountains, um, they have the Baltic Sea to the north, um, and mountain ranges to the south. Um, when I went to 1995, they were still in transition from mm -hmm. when they were under com communism to coming into capitalism. So it was a, a pretty tough time. Mm -hmm. um, there was a lot of unemployment because of the changeover and um, difficulties because there wasn't the, the government safety net that had been there before. I see. Well, what, what inspired you to join up with the Peace Corps? Um, I had a wonderful professor, a teacher in high school who had been a volunteer in um, Tanzania and Ooh. he would talk about his experiences and that I was in the 11th grade and that's when I started really wanting to to do it and then in college I had a professor who would read letters from volunteers oh. who are overseas so that reinforced it but I knew I wanted to go and I left the week after graduating so wow. <laughs> um, how how did you um, find out about your assignment or mm -hmm. I had applied I guess I sent in the application mm -hmm. I had telephone interviews because we didn't have a representative uh, on my campus mm -hmm. um, and actually first um, I found out on the telephone um, and we went to DC and for all the paperwork and then flew to Poland where mm -hmm. we had our training in the country. I see. So uh, we lived in Tomaszów Mazowiecki, which is in the okay. middle. <laughs> it's a, in the middle of the country and we had host families so I lived with a, I had a matka, um, a Polish mom, for uh -huh. three months. And we went to school pretty much every day for the, those three months. So we learned the Polish language. Is that um, pretty difficult or It was easy? very difficult, <laughs> I thought. <laughs> Lots of um, consonants. Mm -hmm. And um, it was a real awakening because I spoke French and um, a little Spanish, so I was used to being able to get around in other countries, but mm -hmm. this is not related at all. Oh. And um, I remember when I first got there thinking this must be what it's like to be illiterate because just looking and trying to see which bathroom to go to or, um, you know, where the train, which train platform I should have been on or anything, mm -hmm. it was very difficult. Um, but they did a great job in training us. I mean, we had immersion. Um, my host mother spoke English but didn't let me know until the day I left. Oh, really? She did a really good job <laughs> because I was convinced. Um, so we, we had intensive language classes mm -hmm. and then we also did a practicum. I, I was in the ESL program, oh, the okay. English as a Second Language. Um, so we did a, a mini course for students in the town where we were teaching English to them. That was your primary assignment? Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. And you taught in the high school? I did. Well, I did. After the three months in Tomashuv, uh, we went our different ways, and mm -hmm. I was sent down to Prudnik, which is in the Opole region. Um, mm -hmm. It's on the uh, border to the Czech Republic. Actually, like, it was beautiful. It was right by the mountains. And um, I was the only foreigner in the town of about 26,000, if, oh. if you count all the farming villages around. Uh -huh. um, wow. 
so I was there and I taught at the the Lyceum number one, which is um, high school number one. Oh, I see. Mm -hmm. so you were saying that um, after the war they had a lot of Russian teachers, but after um, Solidarity in early 1990s, um, they wanted to be able to teach more English mm -hmm. to be able to reach out to the world and, and enter the commerce, global commerce. That's right. Before they weren't allowed to learn English and actually um, only a select few were allowed to learn English mm -hmm. um, and that's why uh, the English language program of Peace Corps was so big there. Um, mm -hmm. Actually a lot of the Russian teachers were uh, losing work because students weren't signing up for Russian. The students have to take two languages, oh. two foreign languages, and it used to be Russian was required and mm -hmm. then they could choose another. Mostly, most of them would speak French. These are Polish teachers who learned and then taught Russian. Yes. And right. then they were being retrained? Yes, many were being retrained just to keep a job, uh -huh. being retrained in English. And actually I had a counterpart um, teacher. We mm -hmm. split the classes. I did the conversational mm -hmm. English and she did the grammar, but she had only learned English maybe two or three years before I came. Oh. So there was a, a real thirst for the language. Uh -huh. And that really became most of my secondary projects were all related to English too because mm -hmm. of that. Mm -hmm. um, for example, I tutored some, some local doctors in English. They mm -hmm. needed it for international conventions that they were going to. Mm -hmm. And uh, we did an English club, of course. Students really enjoyed that. Mm -hmm. And um, I organized the National English Language Convention with the help of other volunteers. Um, we had that was countrywide. Yes, mm -hmm. all students of came Poland. from all of Poland to do debates. And I remember as a when I was learning French, that was something that inspired me to actually learn French, and mm -hmm. it was fun. So. I, that, that was the idea to bring it there to Poland and it was really great and we we also were able to get Polish teachers involved um, mm. you know who didn't have Peace Corps volunteers <coughs> there too but so that was really great. Mm -hmm. Great. Um, can you tell us a little bit about the Polish culture and what the people are like some mm -hmm. of the festivals mm -hmm. they have there? That was some really great festivals a lot around agriculture mm -hmm. um, and the families are really closely knit and, um, and there was also a shortage of housing at the time, so it was really common for more than one generation to live in a home. Oh, yes. And um, I brought a picture of the housing, of the block housing. Mm -hmm. There were really small um, the, accommodations. The block housing was constructed after World War II. Right, right. Them, which is so different from their traditional yes. housing. Yes, mm -hmm. which I have pictures too of more traditional housing. Mm -hmm. But um, yeah, so there would be two generations living in a maybe a one-bedroom apartment, an extended family. Mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. But they would always get together for um, Sundays. Were very important. They're a very religious mm -hmm. um, culture. Um, very very Catholic. Mm -hmm. That's mm -hmm. one of the interesting things is that during communism they were able to practice their religion openly, um, unlike the other countries mm -hmm. because well they just. They weren't going to mess with that. <laughs> um, and, and it was common for, for students to leave school to go to confession, and that was an excuse, a, an excused absence. Uh -huh. Oh, yeah, I mm -hmm. saw that about uh, over 80% of the country is still practicing Catholicism. Yes. Mm -hmm. And there are lots of cathedrals around all the, the cities and towns beautiful cathedrals and they even have monuments like on the corner of the road and mm -hmm. uh, Mary is very has a very big role in Poland it's she's the mother of Poland they call her too mm -hmm. and um, so that you'll see a, a lot more I think of Mary in the churches and also on on little shrines on the side of the road I see mm -hmm. and called upon by farmers agriculture I suppose there would, you, there would be open fields and there's a a, a little marker a with a Mary mm -hmm. interesting mm -hmm. okay. and they really enjoy uh, uh, singing there's uh, accordion music traditional music mm -hmm. but they have really great rock music too I, <laughs> I enjoy it and I still listen to Polish rock music um, really everything and uh, one of the traditional things is the ognisko which is a bonfire oh. and um, so everyone would come out and um, roast sausages in the bonfire and 
you know, seeing and, and just enjoy each other's company. Mm -hmm. How did you get along with the, the foods there? Mm -hmm. they, they're very famous for sausage, Polish yeah. sausage. Which is interesting because I'm a vegetarian. <laughs> <laughs> um, and I remember in my Peace Corps interviews, they were saying, encouraging not to be vegetarian until oh. after the experience. But it wasn't, it, it was somewhat of a challenge, um, but it was okay. So, um, yes sausage, a lot of sausage, um, a lot of potatoes, and a lot of cabbage. Did um, they use um, different spices to dress up the meals, um, flavors? They use a lot of dill. Uh -huh. Dill is a big spice, and I guess salt. Mm -hmm. But um, I'm from Louisiana, so it was pretty bland <laughs> for okay. my liking. But I, do, I did like a lot of the different uh, potato salads that they would have, and cabbage. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. They also have some very colorful costumes oh, yes. you can see during the festivals, mm -hmm. both men and women. Mm -hmm. And also they dress up their homes. Like yes. A lot of carvings or embroidery. So a lot of embroidery, um, painting and wood carvings. I have, um, I brought this chess set here mm -hmm. that I picked up. They, are doing, they do a lot of wood carvings. Um, chess was also a something I tried to learn while I was there. I don't really remember much. Um, and boxes and really intricate, the intricate paintings. Carved boxes or painted mm -hmm. them? Both. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. You had some uh, very nice sample pictures of those yes, boxes. Yes, thank you. Mm -hmm. And uh, pottery as well. Um, th they're very famous for Bola Soviets, which is right here. There's some. Uh -huh. um, pieces. Is that a particular motif or design from that yes. town? Yes. Mm -hmm. Bola Suaviets. And, uh, actually, I've been seeing it a lot in the States now. Before, oh. I hadn't seen it, but I've, I've seen some in the stores in the States. So, so this is a pitcher and a teapot. A teapot. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. Very interesting. Um, you also had a hobby, some hobbies mm -hmm. that you pursued while you were doing your service. Mm -hmm. Well, um, one, I studied uh, vocal performance before going into the Peace Corps, and they oh. are very, um, very into the arts also, mm -hmm. very cultural, and I was able to take voice lessons there. I had to take a train, and I went to Nyssa, which I also have a picture of, a beautiful town that, it's an example of, a, of the, how the towns are laid out. Uh -huh. Which has? Um, the central square, mm -hmm. usually with the church in the middle. And then um, that's like the center of town. Um, and I went there once a week and had voice lessons. Um, I was also able to do quite a bit of traveling, um, mm -hmm. Central Europe and Western Europe. Okay, uh, on weekends? On weekends, mm -hmm. taking night trains and benefiting from the teachers, uh, the teachers' uh, reduced rates. <laughs> so that was Good. nice. Um, so I got to see a lot and, um, you know, learn a lot about myself. I was 22, uh -huh. so it was a kind of a growing up experience um, and really just meet some really amazing people. Oh. W was there a large Peace Corps group um, during the time that you were serving? There was. I believe um, there were 30 of us in the language program alone. I see. And there were also volunteers who were in the... Um, in environmental, working on environmental issues mm -hmm. and small business development. Oh, I see. And small we business? We were trained separately though, so. Oh, I okay. see. Mm -hmm. You mean like teaching about computers or mm -hmm. getting computers business started? And, right, I guess marketing, different, different ways of marketing and running businesses. Mm -hmm. They have special grants for getting oh, started? Oh, yes, actually. Um, that was another project that I worked on. Uh, mm -hmm. I had mentioned that it was a difficult time and there was more unemployment than there had been before mm -hmm. because they had the government subsidies. But in my town, I lived in Prudnik, and they had uh, two factories. One was textile. Mm -hmm. They made towels, mostly in sheets. Mm -hmm. And another was uh, shoes. Oh. 
and uh, leather shoes or yeah, all kinds okay. of pleather shoes <laughs> all kinds and um, they had a lot of layoffs and unemployment was a problem I see so um, the director of my high school along with the computer teacher and the mm -hmm. mayor mm -hmm. we worked together to get a spa grant a spa is a spa is a small project assistance grant okay. through USAID uh -huh. um, they matched a, it was like ten thousand dollars but the community had to get in-kind contributions. I see. And with that we um, created this incredible state-of-the-art computer lab. Oh, really? I, mean, I didn't even know how to use those computers. Okay. The, the computer teacher was very, very, had a real expertise. But so this allowed our students to get trained on the most up-to-date computer programs. Mm -hmm. And then at night the computer teacher ran classes for, um, for the oh employees who had been laid off and I see. to get them retraining. Uh -huh. And so they taught computer languages mm -hmm. and uh, some of the applications. Systems, right. Mm -hmm. oh. It was, and, and then the internet had just come, uh, yes. really. Right. Um, I didn't really learn the internet until I came back to the States, uh -huh. but, um, but they were learning it there mm -hmm. and um, that and helped a lot. Browsing the web. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yes. So that do, was really rewarding. Do you mm -hmm. still email and communicate with some of the people back in Poland? Mm -hmm, a few of them. Um, I get letters still from my my matka, and uh, and now with internet, it makes it a lot easier to um, send letters back and forth and emails back and forth. Some of my former students mm -hmm. and other volunteers who uh -huh. I served with you can keep in touch and see what they're doing now. Mm -hmm. It's great. Now. After you got out of the Peace Corps, um, you started working. Has that experience in the Peace Corps influenced what you're doing with your career now? Sure. I think, um, you know, Poland it was not really a developing country, so it's not really what you think of right. as a Peace Corps experience. And uh -huh. uh, in some ways, I was disappointed with that, um, mm -hmm. although it was really an incredible experience. But mm -hmm. I was looking for something more. And when I came back, I, I'm from Louisiana, and I went back to Louisiana, but wasn't really ready to, to stay there. And mm -hmm. there was the Return Peace Corps Volunteer newsletter uh -huh. that had job um, opportunities posted. Mm -hmm. And I found out about the Training Institute for Careers and Organizing, also known as TICO. Oh. Um, which this is run by the Peace Corps. Actually, it's not run by the Peace Corps, but the Affiliated. Peace Corps posted Oh, I see. The, the job opening, uh -huh. so I found out through it. And I did, um, I worked in the Bronx. I thought it was going to be for three months, but it turned into five years full-time and then another three part-time mm -hmm. um, doing grassroots organizing in, uh, oh. in the communities of the Bronx. Uh -huh. what, what sorts of things did you organize? Um, we worked on tenant issues, mm -hmm. um, housing that was not in good repair or getting heat or hot water. Okay. Um, we also worked on uh, just community quality of life issues, safety, mm -hmm. um, city services, mm -hmm. getting streets fixed. We had some very dangerous areas, so we were able to get stoplights or, or um, stop signs put in, mm -hmm. and um, working on environmental issues too. Oh, so see. it was really actually what the residents were concerned about. Mm -hmm. We started really in the buildings mm -hmm. and then found leaders from the buildings, and then they would talk about what's bothering them in the neighborhood at large. I see. Um, education, uh -huh. over, overcrowding of the public schools. And this is also what you're doing currently? Yes. I'm, I've just come and started with Local 5, and well, actually, I'm working on building community alliances with the Local 5, which represents the hotel and restaurant employees, uh -huh. um, building alliances with the community. So not really the grassroots stuff, but um, identifying uh, common interests and needs. And some of your Peace Corps experience has helped out. Definitely. Mm -hmm. so. Yes. I think it, it was a great way to learn a, another culture, um, mm -hmm. you know, not be a tourist because you live there and you have to learn the language and, mm -hmm. and you're working there too, so you're part of the society while you're there. Mm -hmm. um, so you get much more of an understanding and I think that also makes makes you more open-minded and curious too when you come back here. Mm -hmm. 
Sounds like you had a very good Peace Corps experience I did. there. Yes, and I recommend it. <laughs> <laughs> did um, any of your family or friends have an opportunity to see you out while you were? Oh, my mother got to, to visit, uh -huh. which was really great. Um, and we had a, a reversal of roles because she took me around France when I was eight, and when she came to Poland, she couldn't speak the language or you know That's do anything on her different. own. Yeah. So I had to be the mom in that situation, but and it was you wonderful. Were the guide. Yes, it was, it was wonderful. She stayed for about two weeks, uh -huh. so she got to meet people in my in my town, and then we also traveled. Um, we went to Prague and to Budapest. Mm -hmm and uh, all around Poland too. There's so many things to see there because uh -huh. it's just your, some of those cities are a thousand years old. I think Gdansk had hit a thousand when I was there. Uh -huh. And um, so there's just so much history uh -huh. and the architecture is so beautiful, uh -huh. um, lots to see. What, what do you remember about Poland and your experience uh, besides what you've been talking about? Mm -hmm. Is there anything that stands out in your mind? Um, um, I think just really learning to be independent, mm -hmm. you know, um, mm -hmm. being put in a country where you don't speak the language at all, um, but learning to, you know, function and right. fit in and the people that I met were just really amazing. I've been able to keep in touch with some of my my counterpart and some other friends that I made there. Mm -hmm. And so that's been really wonderful. Okay. Yeah. Um, I'd like to thank you very much, okay. Michelle, for, well, thanks for letting sharing me share. your experiences. Yes. Thank you. And we thank you very much for joining us and hope that you will tune in again for another show with Bring the World Home. Thank you.